Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining Why Sell Sake in the UK, UK, Discover Trade Secrets from Market Experts. This is an online seminar organized by the National Tax Agency of Japan with Japan House London. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining. This event explores the promotion of sake in the United Kingdom. Uh, I am Simon Wright, Director of Programming at Japan House London, and also your host today. Today, we will be welcoming uh, Ms. Yoshitake Rie, who has been promoting Jap Japanese sake for many years now. She will briefly talk about uh, sake in the UK drinks market. Afterwards, we shall be joined by our special guests from Dewa Zakura Shuzo and Kamo Izumi Shuzo, two sake breweries uh, in Japan. And this will be followed then by a panel discussion in three parts with distributors of wine and sake in the UK, where we shall examine uh, sake sales in the UK, sake handling and quality control market trends and new ideas. For those of you who are joining in just a few uh, guidelines, please note uh, that your microphone and webcam will be disabled for the entire duration of the event. For our Japanese audience, please use the interpretation feature set to Japanese for simultaneous translation of the webinar contents into Japanese language. Nihongo wo doji tsuyaku wo kibo no kata wa Zoom no tsuyaku kino wo Nihongo wo sette shite kudasai. Please use the question and answer feature to type our questions for the presenters at any time throughout the session. Um, if you do not want your name to be attached, uh, you can send it anon anonymously. Uh, we will make time at the end for any questions and answers. Uh, these will be collected, any of the questions sent through by Japan House moderators, and we will attempt to get through as many questions as possible. But please do send your questions throughout the event. Please note that the contents of this event will be streamed live on YouTube and LinkedIn, where a recording will be archived later. But first of all, we are honored to show a video message from Ms. Kimura Hidemi, who is Deputy Commissioner of the National Tax Agency of Japan. Good morning, everyone. I'm Hidemi Kimura, Deputy Commissioner of National Tax Agency Japan. First of all, thank you very much for attending this online promotional event of Japanese liquor. It is our great honor to host this event in collaboration with Japan House London, a hub facility for spreading Japanese cultural information overseas. The COVID-19 is still raging throughout the world and has had a huge impact on our lifestyle and business activities. I sincerely hope all of you and your loved ones stay safe and healthy during these difficult times. Let me also express my gratitude to today's panelists for taking time out of their busy schedules to join this event. National Tax Agency is responsible not only for taxation, but also for the sound development of the liquor industry and the country makes more efforts to promote the export of Japanese liquor. Japanese liquor has recently obtained global recognition through winning world-renowned competitions. The export value of Japanese liquor has renewed its record high for nine years in a row. Last year, the export value increased by 7.5% of the previous year and reached about 500 million pounds. The export value of Japanese sake to the UK is also on the rise and reached about 5 million pounds in 2019. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it decreased to 3 million pounds last year. Therefore, this event is very important in terms of developing sales channels of Japanese sake and boosting its export to the UK. 
In today's panel discussion, we would like to ask panelists who operate the RICA industry in the UK to share their valuable views on the current situation of Japanese sake in the UK market and the measures to promote the export of Japanese sake during these difficult times and as well as post-COVID-19. I hope this event is helpful to your business as well. Finally, Japan-UK Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement entered into force last month. This will surely further strengthen the bond between our two countries, which share fundamental values along with the strategic partnership. I hope this event will contribute to the strong tie between us through making Japanese sake a more familiar product in the daily life in the UK and boost its export of Japanese sake to the UK. Thank you very much and please enjoy the event. Our thanks go to Deputy Commissioner Kimura. Thank you very much. Kampai, I can see there. So now we would like to welcome uh, Mr. Nakamura Minoru, Minister of Financial Affairs at the Embassy of Japan in the UK. Thank you very much, Minister Nakamura. We're delighted to uh, welcome you today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Simon. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to attend this sake business webinar hosted by the National Tax Agency of Japan and, the, and Japan House. And to say a few words at the beginning on behalf of the Embassy of Japan in the UK. One of the important jobs of our section and of course of the embassy is the promotion of sake in the UK market. Before the pandemic, we used various events at the embassy for introducing sake to people in this country. Through the continued efforts of people who trade sake here, the sake samurai and the Japanese brewers, the import of sake in, into the UK became successful. However, because of the pandemic, we are facing difficult problems. I hope we can find some solutions to these problems through the discussions at today's webinar. I look forward to the lively discussions among the distinguished panelists. Especially, I would like to welcome Maegaki-san and Kamota-san, representing Japanese sake breweries, which both of which I know pretty well. During the pandemic, Virtual events like today's play an important role to promote consumption and trade of sake. As Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced last Monday, the restrictions on economic activities will be lifted step by step, hopefully by the beginning of summer. I hope we will be able to resume promotion activities physically, just as we had done until about a year ago. I look forward to working closely with you as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister Nakamura. It's very kind of you to join us today. So next, we uh, will go to our first uh, part of, 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 this, uh, of this seminar. And let me welcome uh, Ms. Yoshitake Rie. So, hello, Yoshitake-san. So lovely of you to join us today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for inviting me, Simon. Oh, it's our pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Yoshitake-san is joining us from London today. And for those who may not know um, about you, I, I will I'll give you a brief uh, uh, introduction, if I may. So Rie is a UK-Japan communication consultant and a leading, leading ambassador in Europe for sake where she represents the Japan Sake and Shochu Makers Association, uh, Sake Samurai Association, and the International Wine Challenge Sake Competition. Rie has been spearheading numerous sake and Japanese food promotion campaigns, 
across Europe. And Ria has co been come to known as the Sake Lady of London, if I may be so bold, um, which is uh, now her adopted home. And most recently, she has been awarded the Japanese Foreign Minister's Award for her contribution towards raising the profile of sake and Japanese cuisine. Thank you very much, Yoshitaki san. We're honored to have you here today. Um, if I may hand over to you. Thank you very much, Simon. Thanks to this event, I really focused on marketing in the UK and it was a great chance and I appreciate it very much. Thank you. So I will share my screen, hopefully. Um, can you see that? Absolutely, yes. Great. Thank you. So as I said, I'm going to um, focus on the marketing um, today. Uh, my topic will be uh, starting from the Japanese market, then world, and the UK. This is going to be before and after the corona because impact have changed greatly. Um, so sadly, what is about sake? I'm not going through too much, just a presumed everybody knows about it, even including the Simon, I hope. <laughs> and <laughs> so it's a national drink and uh, we call it Nihon Shu in Japan. And uh, of course, brewed from rice water and the koji is a very uh, microorganism, very special to sake. So let's start exploring the market. Um, Actually, sake itself as an industry is the oldest industry over six, 700 years. But sadly, last 30 years, when you look at the map uh, chart, this, uh, its volume is declining, producing less in the last year, 70% down, which is not really good news. And also equally, the uh, maker's number is declining. So we only have about 1,400. However, recently we have a great uh, improvement in the quality of sake in the appearance of ginjo about 40 years ago. So because of this quality improved so much, that gave a chance to export. So looking at the word export, we have a great, great growth. It's a uh, export actually, as minister said, it's double, no, not double, tripled in terms of value and the volume also uh, improved 50%. When we look at the countries where the sake is exported, if obviously UK is the biggest market and the growing uh, market as China and uh, Asian country and UK is number 10, and, uh, but it's still 1.6% of total export, okay? I thought you might be interested to know about a bit of history. You know, sake was exported by Dutch East Indian Company for the first time at the end of the 16th century. And for the first sake arrived in UK is 1877, which is about 150 years ago, because UK, Japan has an incredibly good relationship for 50 year, 150 years. So sake was nothing new. It's not nothing new, but the quality has changed. Looking at the UK market now specifically, export, just like a word has improved and uh, dramatically as well. But they say we had a bit more zigzag, you know, up and down, but it's still growing. And uh, I believe that the market uh, is about worth over 10 million pounds uh, in terms of the sales. And uh, this is due to the you know, growth of the uh, food, Japanese popularity, Japanese food popularity. So we have to agree with that. But please do not forget, today I'm talking about maybe export value, but there are two beautiful sake makers established in, uh, recently in England. One is Dojima Sake Brewery from uh, Osaka, from um, uh, Sake Brewery, and also newly uh, established Kampai Craft Sake Breweries. These two are dramatically uh, contributing the promotion of sake as well in this country. Size 
of the alcohol market in the UK is huge. It's 48 billion pounds. And um, I just wanted to see what sort of share the sake has, which is invisible. This means it's a drop in the ocean and that we have incredible potential. We just started and buzzing, but future is great. When it comes to the category of sake, I have to say it is one of the most difficult because it doesn't communicate directly in the world, but uh, which I try. Um, let's see what sort of production in terms so of in Japanese market. Table sake is about 75 of the total production. And the premium sake we call Toktei Mei Shoshu is 25%. Then these are the words uh, given according to the polishing ratio, according to whether we put the uh, distilled alcohol in the end or not. So these are Jumai Daiginjo, Daiginjo. These are the words, unfortunately, people has to <laughs> be able to understand when you buy it. So it, I know how difficult for those pe uh, non-Japanese people to understand to start with. What I wanted to say here is that majority of um, sale of sake is uh, premium sake in this country. And uh, it, was, it is mostly consumed at a restaurant. Not many table sake are sold in this country. This is something I wanted to share. Actually, I just uh, made it by myself. So it is my anal analyzation, but um, Let's find out how sake is distributed in this country. First, I want to compare with the wine distribution. Wine distribution normally has an importer, which goes down to wholesalers, then restaurants, uh, you know, restaurants, bars, pubs, we call it on trade because they open it on the spot, on premises. The rest we drink at home, things like that, we call it off, off trade. So this big triangle a distribution, whereas sake is like this. Sake is more or less uh, concentrated on Japanese community, Japanese restaurant, Japanese stores. So and the importers, wholesalers are in this case often the same. So this means that the sake and the wine distribution are not integrated. They are more or less operating separately. That's something we have to think. Then without any prejudice, there is one sake I think they have successfully uh, managed, merged into the wine trade is called Akashitai. We have invited a representative today, uh, the Malusia. They are everywhere in this country, okay? So cost of analysis is another interesting thing. So um, straightforwardly, average is the retail price in this country. It's between uh, 30 and 40, it's like uh, let's say 35 pounds. And the cost of sake ex work in Japan is about 20%, I think. And the rest is the tax, the duty, um, transport and the margins. And uh, this means it's a five times of the cost of the price original one and maybe four times ish more expensive than Japanese market. This is something, it's quite a big difference, okay? We now, after the corona 2020, the sake market has changed dramatically again. We had a biggest attack. What it means, export shrunk. 42% uh, down, feels like I, I really feel half because sake couldn't sell because of the, you know, we only supplied to the restaurant. So it was a really hard start. So, and the recovery is quite slow. Whereas the UK market, wine market is kind of growth and people still drink at home, but the sake didn't happen. So we need to ask why, why sake? had to suffer so much. This slide is um, kind of a summary of what I think about the UK market. 
and what I learned from the corona. It's one is whether it is good or bad, we have, a, you know, relied on Japanese restaurant for the sale. But this was nothing wrong as a strategy because Japanese restaurant is booming and people who come to Japan restaurant, only 20% were drinking sake. So obviously distributors really concentrated to promote the Japanese sake at the Japanese restaurant, which was fantastic. And the Japanese restaurant will be always the core, even in the future for the promotion of the sake. But at the same time, what we learned was consumer's awareness is so low, still very low. This means it doesn't create the demand, means the supermarkets and the shops, wine shops are not willing to stock sake because they can't sell it. So, and also we've been promoting sake, we feel like we did enough, but we think we are just preaching the converted people. So, you know, we have to think new way. Then obviously always the price was a problem because this is the country which can have a very cheap uh, uh, wine and things like that. And then we have a 35 average sake, which is difficult for the consumers to buy. And this uh, gap between Japanese and uh, UK price is now becoming a little bit of a problem, I, in my opinion, because consume, uh, consumers can compare the price and that they are almost trying to buy it directly from Japan. So this will create a new business called something like e-commerce. And uh, you know, without a border, people may try to buy it directly from Japan. Everything has a silver lining. So we had the hardest time, but we had also incredible unexpected uh, gift, which was a DX, you know, digital formation. And we have done more uh, sake PR than ever we did. And awareness of sake is growing so rapidly, which is great. And also because of this suffering time, we trade is learning more, you know, uh, and uh, strengthening the trade business online. So we will be standing much stronger in the two big legs in the future. So I think this experience makes sake business much stronger in the future. So uh, PR wise, we will be spreading the word and demystifying about the sake. For example, classic misconception, I put it three is Still, believe it or not, still people think sake is too strong, like a distilled uh, you know, alcohol, and the sake needed to be drunk. This is a classic cliche. And sake only goes with the Japanese food. These are the three things we need to remove from their people's mind. So we have more online people uh, starting business, which we never had before. So this is the good news. And uh, the lastly, I wanted to show you, we only have sake distributor, maybe 10, 15, and they are sharing the you know, uh, sake market, but we need more people to come and join the board. So I really think sake, although at the moment it's hard, we have a wonderful spring to wait and the prospect is huge. So I really hope more people in the industry will join and uh, enjoy the sake marketing. Thank you, Simon. I think I'm over the time, all right? Absolutely fine, no problem at all. Thank you so much, uh, Yoshitake-san. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, I, am, I am to be converted, so I... <laughs> That's the hardest thing to do in life. <laughs> So I, I look forward to today's session in order to be able to, to try and understand a little bit more. It's going to be extremely valuable for me as well. So thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. You, thank you. See you later. Yeah, see you later at the end of the session when uh, you'll be taking part in the panel and at the question and answers as well. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Oh. So now we move to our two special guests uh, who are joining us from Japan. We have uh, Mr. Kamota Naoki, uh, who is export chief in charge uh, of the sales department in Dewa Zakura Shuzo 
in uh, Yamagata. And we also have Maegaki Kazuhiro-san, uh, who is joining us from Kamo Izumi Shuzo in Hiroshima. So first of all, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Kamota-san. He has been in the exporting industry uh, since the year 2000 and has exported Dewazakura Sake to 35 countries. Uh, it says here that he wants to, he wants Japanese culture to be known more throughout the world via the medium of sake. And Mr. Maegaki uh, is a fourth generation brewer from Kamo Izumi Shuzo, uh, which has a commitment to the Junmai, which is the pure rice brewing method that was established in Seijo in uh, 1912, Seijo otherwise known as the Sake Town. Uh, Maegaki-san is also the current head representative of Japan Sake Brewers Association Junior Council, an association of young sake brewers that coordinates with the International Wine Challenge Sake Department. Welcome, Mr. Kamota and Mr. Maegaki. We are delighted to, to have you with us today. Thank you so much. Lovely to see you. Thank you. I um, I have here <laughs> here something that was very kindly uh, sent to me. This this is um, I believe this belongs to to you. Yes, Mr. Maegaki. And I also have this as well, uh, which I believe is uh, from your group. Yes. Thank you very Thank much. You. Um, Mr. Kamota, um, can I can I ask you first? Would you like to tell me, please? Could you tell me a little bit about about uh, your sake? はい、え、ありがとうございます。え、こちらですね。この1980年に発売されえ、この This is the uh, the one you're talking about, I believe it's called Oka. Uh, the English name we've given it is Cherry Bouquet. Uh, and this is really our iconic sake product. It went on sale in 1980 and you will have heard just now in uh, in Rie Yoshitake's uh, presentation the word Ginjo. And this is Ginjo. This is what it says on the front of the bottle. Uh, and this is what we launched in 1980 because we wanted people in Japan and now around the world to know about Ginjo uh, sake. And I think if it weren't for this sake, uh, Dewazakura wouldn't exist. Thank you very much, Mr. Kamoto. Mr. Maigaki, maybe um, I can I can move over to, to, to this. If you could tell us maybe a little bit about, uh, about this sake. Mr. Maigaki, I need to, I... Kamoizumi Shizou no Maigaki desu. Eh, ima go shoukai o itadaita o sake wa ichi no machi de toreta o kome de tsugutta junmai dai ginjo desu. De, watakshi domo no o sake wa kome to kome koji dake no pure na o sake junmai jouzo ni kodawatta eh, kono o sake mo sono o tsukuri kata ni kodawatta o sake nari masu. Well, thank you. I'm Mayagaki of Kamoizumi Shizou. Um, this sake here is made using local rice. It's a Junmai Daiginjo sake, and our brewery is really focused on using the Junmai pure rice method of brewing, where we only use rice and rice koji. Uh, and this sake was made. Uh, following um, those uh, precepts and uh, it's very important for us that this is a sake that goes very well with food. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Mayagaki. Um, Mr. Kamoto, if I if I may may go back to to you, um, you're joining us from from Yamagata today. That's correct. Yes. はい、えっと今酒蔵の中のまあオフィスですねからズーム会議で参加しております。はい。Yep, I'm joining you from my office inside the brewery. Marvelous. Thank you very much indeed. I'd like to ask a few questions to both you and, and Kamoto san,、uh, san and to Maegaki san as well. Kamoto san, first, if I may.、Um, you are working on exporting and selling sake uh, uh, in the UK.、Um, could you please tell us the current situation for, for, for you at your brewery? はいえーとそうですね、まず2019年に話をちょっと戻る必要があるんですがあの輸出においてですね、えー、我が社でも過去最高を記録した年が2019年でした、えー、非常に、まあ、順調に輸出,も輸出が伸びてですね素晴らしい年だったなというふうに思っていますでそこで COVID-19 が発生しまして一転しましてですね、えー過去最大の落ちを記録しました。実際あの2020年ですね、1年間輸出を終えまして、えー、まあ 35%、3分の1ですね、えー、輸出の売り上げが完全にダウンしております、えー。そしてこれからどうなっていくのかと、えー、業界全体で気になっている。えー、ただそこはあそこは抜けたんじゃないかなという感じでおります。We need to go back to 2019, first of all,、uh, because 2019 for us was a record year for exports.、Um, it was going really well. Sales were growing overseas. It was a great year for us. And then COVID 19 came along,、uh, and we saw the biggest fall in our exports ever.、Um, over the course of 2020, our exports dropped 35%, so a third.、Um, and, and now the whole industry is, is waiting to see. What, what happens next, but I think we have come through the worst of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kamoto san. Maigaki san, if I may, if I may、um, ask you、um, the same question. You're, you're joining us from your, your brewery, yes, in, in Hiroshima? Yes, now I'm in Hiroshima. 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 にうちの蔵はあります。その蔵の中の私のオフィスから今日はお話しさせてもらっています。That's right. I'm in my office in the brewery in Hiroshima and more specifically in this district of Hiroshima, Saijo, as you can see here, which is known for its、uh, sake brewing. Thank you very much. I, I would like to, 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 to move on to ask, if I may, Maegaki san,、um, if you could tell us briefly why you decided to export、uh, and sell、uh, sake、uh, in the UK. And how long have you been exporting? A cocodeno ham by a Kyuju Nendai Kara, a Chibu start to Shimashtaga, Naganaka Sono Toki Amaku Kimasen de Sta. De Sono Ato Nisen Hachinen Kara, a Imano partner to the Ishoni Desne, Igris Neno used to Hajimate, Ima Junchoni. 増えていましたが先ほど鴨田さんがあったように昨年と比べるとあ一昨年と昨年は比べるとですね半分近いダウンになっていますでなぜ始めたか、うん、これは非常に難しい質問ですけどもやはりあの海外に、えー、お客様方ですねご要望があればぜひその方の期待に応えたいというのが我々、えー、生産者、えー、蔵元の気持ちですのでそれが日本から飛行機で12時間離れたところであっても、えー、ぜひそういった期待に応えたいという思いで送らせてもらっています。We started、uh, selling to the UK once in the 1990s,、uh, but it didn't really take off back then.、Um, and then in 2008, we met with、uh, our current UK partners and started exporting again, and this time it went very well.、Uh, but as、uh, Kamoto san said, 
we experienced a, a fall as well in our sales in 2020 compared to 2019. We saw a 50% drop. Uh, in answer to your question as to why did we start exporting to the UK, as a producer, as a brewer, we want to meet the demand that there is for our product. And if people want to be drinking our sake, even if that's a 12 hour plane ride away, then we want to provide the sake for them to drink. Thank you very much. Uh, and Kamoto-san, um, if, I, if I may move on to, to maybe another question. Um, you, you, you sell to the UK. Do, do you have any uh, ideas, any tips for, for selling sake in the UK from the position of a brewer? Um, for example, do you have any um, advice about what sort of sake suits the taste of, of people in Europe or in the UK? Uh, any, any impact on design, for example? はい、え、素晴らしい質問だと思いますけれども、え、ま、え、本当熟したメロンのような香りがしますが、こういったお酒を飲んでいただくと非常にいい入りやすい、馴染みやすいワインと同じように楽しめるんだなと。え、そこに気づいていただけるんじゃないかなと思っております。ですからやっぱり銀
じゃないかなというふうに感じています。I don't know about design specifically, but what I do get asked a lot by customers in, in London and、uh, around the world is what food does this sake go with?、Um, and so we need to be able to answer that question.、Uh, we need to have a clear idea of, of what、uh, goes well with, with different types of sake so that the customers can imagine themselves drinking it.、Um, Also, I find that distinctive sakes are an easy way in for an overseas audience.、Um, like this one here that I've got is a nigori sake, a cloudy sake, or ones that have particularly distinctive fruity aromas. They're a, an easy way of, of introducing sake and of,、um, uh, of, of, of getting a, a new audience to appreciate the, the distinctive qualities. Thank you very much. Maybe we have time for maybe one, one last question.、Um, About, did you have any difficulties、uh, in the way of working、uh, in Japan and, and in, in the UK? And, and any problems or issues or surprises regarding the different ways that maybe people do business? Maybe I can ask Mr. Yeah, Mr. Maigaki, if you, if you may first, and then also to Mr. Kamoda. Hi.、Uh... そうですねまず日本酒に対する知識とか情報っていうのが少ないのでまずこれを知ってもらうためのところからスタートしなきゃいけないですねそれから、えー、やはり難しい点というかですねあの、まあ、幸いにイギリスで最初にこう,うまくいかなかった時っていうのは我々の伝えたいことを非常にこう伝えてくれる手段というかですねやっぱりそのコミュニケーションっていうのはすごく取りづらかったんですけどえー、と今、パートナーとなっていただいている方には、非常にその辺のあのコミュニケーションがえまあ信頼できるパートナーと一緒にできるっていうのが非常に良かったかなというふうに思います。えー、今もそうですけれども、言葉の問題もあります、えー。日本酒にしかない表現の仕方をどうやって、えー、イギリスの方に分かりやすい言葉にして伝えていくかっていうのは、すごくえ重要なことなんじゃないかなというふうに思いますね。Well, because there is such a lack of awareness and a lack of information and knowledge in the UK, that's, that's the place where you have to start.、Um, I think one reason why it didn't go so well when we started exporting to the UK the first time round is because of communication difficulties that we had.、Uh, but our, our UK partner now,、um, we trust very much. We have excellent communication, and I think that's a, a key to our success in the UK now. There is There is a language barrier. And I think one thing that, that is very important is figuring out how to explain these terms that are unique to the world of sake in a way that is easy for, for non Japanese people to understand. Thank you very much. Maybe the same to Mr. Kamoto. Do you, do you have any comments about any issues or difficulties that you may have encountered and how you've overcome them? はいえーとまあ、あのこれまで20年輸出をやってきてですね、えーまあ、辛い辛かったようなことがあったのかと、えー、大変だったようなことがあったのかと聞かれますと、えーまあ、正直個人的にはなかったなということになりますあの酒を売ること酒を広めること酒を伝えていくということは非常に、えー、もう楽しいことですから、えーまあ、ちょっと今難しい顔で話をしておりますけれども酒を売るということは酒を飲むということでもありまして、えー、おかげさまで素晴らしいパートナーの方あーイギリスのパートナーの方に恵まれまして本当に日々丁寧に我々の酒を伝えていただいているおかげで、まあ、我々も年に数度おイギリス訪問した際にはですねまあ、素晴らしい方がまた素晴らしい方を生むとまた素晴らしい方とつながれるということがそういうことばかりでして本当にうん何つったらいいんでしょうね本当困ったということはありません、えー、ですからあの、えー、我々の酒を愛してくれる方と巡り合って仕事をしていく、まあ、これがやっぱりお酒を広めていく上では一番大事だと思いますですからそういう理解者の方とですね、え
、まあ、なんとか巡り合えることができたんですけどどうやって巡り合えるんだって言われると困っちゃうんですが、まあ、日々真面目に仕事をしていくと見つかるんじゃないかなっていうのが私の正直な気持ちです。I've been exporting for 20 years now, and I haven't really had that many difficulties, I have to say. I haven't struggled that much,、um, not personally, because selling sake, telling people about sake, increasing the popularity of sake, it's fun. I've got my serious face on today, but, but selling sake means drinking sake at the end of the day.、Um, we've got a fantastic partner in the UK、um, who has been spreading the word about our sake and who has been connecting us with other great people. And so I haven't really struggled.、Um, we've been fortunate to meet people along the way who have loved our sake and, and to be able to work with those people. And I think that's the most important thing. As to how you go about encountering those people, That's a different story, and I, I couldn't tell you exactly how to do that. But I feel like if you're, if you're doing your work with passion, then you will meet those right people. Thank you very much. I feel, Mr. Kamota,、um, I'm on the road to this conversion already,、uh, and it shows so how important the,、uh, the, the partners in the UK are. So I, I'm looking forward to this next part of the. Panel discussion、um, very much indeed, because we will meet、uh, these people who indeed represent、uh, the sake breweries、uh, in the UK and obviously do so much work to help promote. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for for the moment from, from you, Mr. Maegaki, and, and, and Mr. Kamota. Thank you so much for joining us from Hiroshima and from Yamagata. It's been, it's been very, very interesting to listen to you. You will join us again at the end of this session、um, for, for the questions that are coming in from our audience. If you do have any questions, anybody who's watching, please do,、uh, do put your questions down in the question and answer、uh, format at the bottom of your screen. We will be able to get to those questions at the end. Thank you very much indeed. I look forward to seeing you again、uh, a little later on. Thank you, Mr. Magaki. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. So now we shall move on to、uh, our first group of panelists、uh, from the UK.、Uh, this group of panelists are all established、uh, importers of sake in the UK and deal a lot in the Japanese restaurant market.、Uh, we have、uh, Oliver Hilton Johnson,、uh, who is joining us from Gloucestershire.、Uh, Oliver is a sake specialist and director of Tengu Sake, a sake import, wholesale, and retail company. Tengu Sake supplies quality Japanese sake and spirits to some of the UK's finest restaurants and bars and is the recipient of the International Wine Challenges Sake Merchant of the Year Award from 2016 to 2019, which is four, four, year, four times, I believe.、Uh, in November 2019, Oliver was named as one of the future 50 drinks industry professionals to watch. He is joined by、uh, Mr. Mogi Tetsuburo.、Uh, Mogi san is the managing director of JFC UK Limited, and he is joining us today from London.、Uh, JFC UK Limited is a Japanese food distributor. And sake has always been a focus throughout his 15 years at JFC. He has experience in promoting sake in various markets、uh, from San Francisco, Los Angeles to Mexico City, and now the UK. Mogi san has overseen the growth of sake markets overseas and strives to develop the profile of sake wherever he goes, looking for local success formula. He is a Japan Sommelier Association certified wine sommelier, Sake Service Institute certified international kisakishi, and Wine and Spirit Educational Trust Level 3 award holder in sake. And the third member of this panel is、uh, Ms. Tasaka Asami. Uh, who's also joining us from London.、Uh, Tasaka san is the managing director at World Sake Imports、uh, UK.、Uh, World Sake Imports is a branch of a US based sake specialized imports company. And it has over 100 high end restaurants throughout the UK, which、uh, Tasaka san supplies.、Uh, she's played a key role in the growth of sake sales in New York for the World Sake Imports and helped to foster the sake boom in New York City. Moved to London and opened the UK market in 2008. She is a panel chair of the International Wine Challenge Sake Competition 
And currently, Tazakazan is focusing on building a retail and online business to cope with the new environment. Hello, uh, Oliver, uh, Mongisan, and Tazakazan. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Hello. So you are the first of our panelists. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm going to ask maybe each of you a question first um, uh, to see where your opinions about where we are in, 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 in the market at the moment. But please do feel free to, to chip in if you, if you have any comments to each other or, or any questions that you might want to ask if someone has said something. So please do. Um, Oliver, if I may first, first go to you. As, as a non-Japanese distributor, um, did you find language a barrier for dealing with sake? Um, not especially, but like forging a relationship with anyone from another culture, I think it is important to speak at least some of the language. As uh, my Gakusan and Kamoto-san were saying, the human relationships are especially important. And having done business with Japan and the Japanese some nine years now, I can testify to the level of importance put on this. My Japanese is a conversational, depending upon the conversation, but it also allows me to chat to brewery owners and workers and so on in a kind of informal way, say, you know, in an izakaya at the end of the more formal business part when that's done. Um, this is important and, and enjoyable, um, and it's part of doing business with Japan. But of course, ultimately, business is business, and my Japanese is not good enough to communicate the nuance of a contract or indeed to understand the detailed explanations on sake brewing. And yeah, here I must rely on translators. And I find between us, either the brewery or I can provide a translator to facilitate these bits. And actually, Jetro have on more than one occasion proved a most valuable resource for translators. With Jetro being the Japan oh, Trade, so absolutely right. Yeah, Dan, you can, and they're, they're, they they are contactable here in London, aren't they? Yes, and indeed, they've got um, offices throughout the world in every, um, maybe not every country, but uh, most countries, and so they have a local office you can contact, and then they'll um, contact uh, the mothership, as it were, and find a, a translator or someone who can help you on the ground in Japan. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Mogi-san, if I may, 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 may move on, on to you, um, as, as this is a panel that deals very much with the market that, that requires sake at the moment already, with restaurants as we were talking about, as a Japanese food distributor, do you find it difficult to distribute sake outside the Japanese distribution network, such as to local wine shops or, or to pubs? Um. No, not really. Um, mainly because uh, that really hadn't been our focus. Um, and it, I, I personally think that it should not be the industry's focus just yet. Um, our focus being uh, we're you know, primarily focused on Japanese restaurants. And uh, we want the Japanese restaurants to want to sell sake. And you'd be surprised as to how many restaurant owners, Japanese restaurant owners, uh, they're not, you know, really infused. They're nonchalant about um, selling sake in the first place. You know, our guests like uh, wine. Uh, we have a good extensive uh, cocktail program, that kind of thing. Um, so, um, you know, uh, we want to educate on how to sell more sake. We have a lot of ideas, uh, but there's no point in education when it's forced upon you. Um, and so uh, when we can establish that you want to sell sake, then there are many methodologies and strategies that we can introduce and we can suggest uh, so that we can now get your diners uh, to try sake instead of uh, trying wine or beer. Um, that should be the mid-range goal of the industry, uh, trying to get the people um, to, uh, to drink sake at least while they're at a Japanese restaurant setting. Um, and in order to do that, the restaurant owners and sommeliers and managers, they have to want to sell sake. And that's what I'm focusing on right now. And that's what I'm finding the most difficult. Okay, thank you very much. When you say restaurants as well, is it is it um, outside the Japanese restaurant market? Yes, any, any uh, restaurants that don't serve Japanese food or? Right. So um, um, at the moment, I don't really need um, um, uh, non-Japanese restaurants to um, list the sake, but to have it sit there for months with, and, and you know go go bad. Um, so my point was, um, our focus is uh, cr currently on the Japanese restaurants, at least get them um, on board 
uh, you'd be surprised as to how many restaurants, uh, Japanese restaurants, they're not, um, they're not really, um, they're, they're not really uh, with the game. I mean, you know, high-end restaurants like uh, Nobu, Zimaroka, they get it, obviously. But um, you'd be surprised as to how many restaurants uh, they're not uh, really on board yet. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, mongi san Thank you. If, if I may move on to Tasaka-san, if, if, if I may. Um, I have a little note here that tells me a little bit about you. Uh, um, as an independent sake distributor, you're suffering from lockdown as 80% or more than 80% of your clients are restaurants. So how, how are you coping with, with this, this situation where the, the restaurants are closed? Um, I, I hear you're exploring an, an off-trade business, is that right? Okay. So yeah, uh, we are really focused, we were focusing on the restaurant uh, business uh, we were selling because we're quite high-end uh, sake and the price are a little bit higher. So we really need a person to actually explain about our sake, which we need uh, sommeliers to explain and then um, customer to enjoy our sake. So um, our sales is down more, uh, almost half now, but then we decided to focus a little bit more on the off trade. So we were uh, we had uh, some retail shops and also online sales. So we start doing a promotion of ourselves directly to consumers, and that expanded more than uh, double uh, compared to two thousand nineteen to 2020. So I think we are really seeing the new market for ourselves, we, which we weren't really focusing uh, previously. So can you hear me well? Okay? Yes, I can, yeah, we can Good. hear you very well. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Um, Oliver, can I, can I maybe move back to you? Um, uh, I, ha I have a note here that, uh, that tells me that you, you translate labels uh, mm. Japanese sake labels. Um, do you feel the language on, on sake labels uh, and the descriptions uh, should be improved or, or, or whether there's any room for, for, for change there? Of course, th this group is very much devoted to the Japanese restaurant group, I would say, if, if for the purposes of this panel, but um, do, you, do you think that's necessary as well? Uh, quite a difficult question to answer. Um, if you mean, do I think the labels on the front of sake bottles should be designed in a way that it's digestible to a non-Japanese audience, then absolutely. In my view, there absolutely must be some English on the front label, even if it just echoes the Japanese or it simply says sake. Ultimately, we need someone standing in a supermarket or a shop of some sort to at least know what they're looking at. It must be identifiable as sake. Once that's done, then the back label, which is what I put a lot of work into, can take over um, and can provide more nuance and more detail. Now, if your question is whether the descriptions such as Jinmai Daiginjo, Honjozo, etc., are useful, uh, this is when it gets more complicated in my view. Indeed, this is a valid question for the domestic Japanese sake market as much as it is for the international market. Ultimately, the designations of things like Honjozo and Jinmai Daiginjo are less to do with the consumer experience and more to do with the brewing philosophy and technique. And there are many, many examples where a sake does not conform to one might, what one might regard as typicity for that designation. And there's a lot of uh, argument as to what typicity for a specific designation is. There's a lot of work to be done here. Uh, at the end of the day, the person who's buying the sake needs to understand what it's going to be like. And with a poorly understood category like sake, this is especially important. Uh, but this is as true in Japan as it is anywhere. Um, and label design is, I think, the first window that the consumer gets into what the experience is going to be like when they put the liquid in their mouths. So, yeah, labels are important. I mean, I, the, the two that, I mean, quite by coincidence, uh, both from De, Dewazakura and from Kamo Izumi, are, are, are both, both not, no, no English on the front, but I suppose one 
it adds an idea of authenticity, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. My market research suggests that the consumers don't want to get rid of the kanji. They want that. They want to see and to buy into that whole thing. But at the same time, they want to vaguely understand what it is they're looking at. Is it a bottle of sake? Is it a bottle of shochu? Is it a bottle of mirin? Very difficult for a consumer to understand that if they don't read. It's not even a question of reading. The Japanese letters, kanji, don't even look like words to non-Japanese people, or, you know, people that don't read kanji. They just look like hieroglyphs. So it's not a window in at all by the kanji. Understood, thank you. And, and you mentioned briefly there the, the different levels of, of, of sake, premium sake and, 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 and the like. If I may ask Mogi-san, um, do, 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 you, do you think that, that ordinary sake, for example, that is not necessarily premium sake, to, to be drunk with, 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 with food in a, in, a, in a restaurant? Or do you think it should be sold in supermarkets or should it be made more available to for, uh, people at home? Right, um, ordinary sake. Um, I think um, we should separate um, uh, futsushu and honjozo. Uh, honjozo is uh, part of the premium category. And I do think Honjozo has a fair amount of represent, representation here in the UK. I mean, one of our best selling sake is, is a Honjozo. Uh, but Honjozo uh, accounts for only about, um, I think about 8% of all, all the uh, tax sake um, out of Japan, uh, in Japan. And it is also the only category to decrease among the Tokute uh, Meishi, the premium um, every year. So obviously there's not a whole lot of um, um, focus on Honjozo industry-wide. So I do believe our representation here in the UK for Honjozo is pretty proportionate. Now, Futsushu, um, I think we're just talking about focus. Uh, the focus of the in industry right now is to gain new audiences. Chances are those new audiences are wine drinkers and flavor profile of Futsushu, it just does not fit with wine drinkers. Um, like uh, Mr. Uh, Kamoda uh, said earlier, that uh, the key to success in the US market, uh, UK market is the fragrance. Um, so um, the purpose of the uh, our game, or the game of sushi has now become, how can we make sake cheaper and faster um, for heavy users? Not how we can, how can we win over new fans? Um, so uh, in that sense, it doesn't really fit our narrative. Um, the fact that um, the fact that they come in an unattractive two-liter paper packs uh, also doesn't help. So no, um, I, I don't think we need uh, uh, to be um, importing uh, a lot of um, uh, futsushu uh, into the markets uh, here. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. And maybe one one last question for for this session before we move on, Tasaka-san, if I if I may come to you uh, again. Um, in the future, with all the problems that have been happening, I hear you've had some shipment problems as well uh, during during this time. Do you think um, you'll be selling more online rather than through restaurants in the future? Well, I don't think we will sell more sake. Than restaurants if restaurant opens, but I think it would continue the sales of uh, online or details because the, uh, the a lot of people start drinking sake and getting used to where to get it and how to get it and integrate it with their life, which will not change because it's quite fun to drink at ho uh, sake at home, and that habit will probably continue even though they go to restaurant, but they eat at home as well. And sake will stay uh, in the, their life of the quality and things like that. So yeah, we um, if the time is becoming normal, I think our sake sales will uh, grow quite well. That's what we believe. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if, uh, you don't mind, uh, I'd like to now move on probably to our next set of panelists, but of course you will be staying around and, and, and listening to what is being said and join us for the question and answer session at, at the end. And, and unless you have any comments that you'd like to make before we move on. Okay, wonderful, thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed. And we'll see you at, uh, 
at the end of this session. Many thanks indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. OK, next we move on to our next set of three panelists. Um, these, 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 this group of panelists deals in the distribution of wine mainly. And we're looking at what crossover there may be between the wine industry and the sake industry. First, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Scott Payne. He is the national account manager at uh, Marussia Beverages UK, and he's joining us from Bristol uh, today. Uh, he has 17 years experience distributing and selling wine and spirits and a further 12 years of running restaurants, cocktail bars, nightclubs and events. Scott is responsible for the distribution into wholesale nationally and overseeing successful implementation of sake into key accounts. He has worked with sake for the last eight years at Marussia Beverages, devoting his passionate success to on year on year, year growth of sake's category of beverage in both the on trade and retail channels. We also have uh, uh, Peter McCombie, uh, Master of Wine. Uh, he is the Wine and Sake Marketing Distribution Consultant, uh, JFC Limited, and joining us also from, from London. Uh, he is the co-chairman and acting panel chair of Sake at the International Wine Challenge. He consults on wine and Sake for clients around the world and is an expert in pairing wine and Sake with food. He endeavours to introduce sake to the World Wine Network and is currently working on sake listings for two wine merchants. And our third panellist uh, in this group is uh, Ray O'Connor, also a master of wine, uh, the director of Naked Wines. Uh, and he's calling, uh, I think, believe from, from Buckinghamshire uh, today. Uh, born and raised in Ireland, Ray found his passion for wine when working in a Dublin restaurant. Uh, he moved to London, where he worked as a sommelier for Gordon Ramsay, and six years spent working as a commercial manager for International Wine Challenge enabled him to train his palate for the practical paper of the Master of Wine exam. Over the years, Ray has been a wine judge, run his own wine school, and won the Young Wine Writer of the Year Award in 2007. And since 2013, he has been the wine director for Naked Wines UK and spends a large amount of time in wine regions around the world sourcing new winemakers with a keen focus on quality control. His other passions largely revolve around running music and Guinness. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Maybe this is the, uh, the, the the panel I, I identify most with, maybe, in that, um, <laughs> or maybe not, I don't know, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm very unaware of, 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 of sake, really, um, but more and more aware of wine, I suppose. Um, if I may start with you, Scott, if, if, if I may. Um, unlike others in the industry, um, I hear that your sake, Akashitai, uh, is selling even more during the pandemic. And may I ask why that may be? Yeah, certainly. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, I'd just uh, like to say, uh, yeah, it's, it's mainly due to the work that we've done already. We've got a great inertia. Uh, you know, I've been working with this brand for, for the past seven years, as you said, and, um, you know, we get new distribution every year. So despite the pandemic, you know, we there's a phasing uh, issue. So you know, perhaps people, uh, you know, new, new customers have come in and bought new products and, you uh, you know, that would have taken us through till March. Uh, and then the easing of the, the lockdown, we, we saw, you know, eat out to help out. Um, restaurants went crazy uh, um, for, for a short period. So we still had some some great on-trade sales. Um, we also have a focus um, in retail, as you mentioned, and, and, and other channels. So, uh, you know, we're very well positioned. So it's a lot to do with our uh, the work we've already put in. Um, and we're also seeing uh, quite a lot of premiumization. So uh, value increased over volume in 2020 for us. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, um, Peter. Maybe if I if I can if I can move move to you. I understand. Am, am I right? Do you, do you have the you 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 have received uh, these as well? Yes, I. I have. I have. I understand. I, I don't know. Have you have you tasted? Uh, any, any? Uh, I have actually. Um, and uh, funnily enough, I really rather liked. Them. <laughs> um, the um, uh, the Derazakura is is I think is. In that sort of typically floral fragrant style. Um, in fact, I've even got my little cup, my proper cup here. Um, there's some delicacy. There's some, some restraint. There's some lovely fruity and, and savory notes. And then when you taste it, it's really lovely mouthfeel. It's smooth. It's clean. It's quite long. 
Um, it's really delicious. And it's, it's interesting um, for me tasting sake compared to tasting wine, because you obviously use the same equipment, but you have to kind of flip it on its head. You're, you're often looking for, for subtlety with, with sake, maybe more than you are for, for wine. Uh, which sort of leads me on in, in, in a way uh, to uh, the Kamazumi, um, which is more of a broad, rich style. Maybe uh, you might even say a little rural, it's sort of Western Japan rather than further to the north. Um, maybe I'm sort of a bit Pavlo, Pavlov's dog, but I picked up a little note of chrysanthemum here. Um, and there's also almost, a, there's, there's this breadth and rich, richness some umami i'm not sure you can smell umami but we tell ourselves we can um but again when you taste it's richer and it's fuller maybe a bit more sweetness um i mean i think the house style here is is for that richer style but i think it, this is definitely uh one for food um although nothing wrong with the other one either but i think i think definitely it makes me think about um wanting to eat something actually <laughs> thank you very much thank you very much um for I'm enjoying the, 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 the language you're using. And, and obviously there's this crossover, isn't there? And, and how we talk about tasting and, and, and the, the tastes of sake and, and wine. Um, if, I, if I, I'll get back to a few more questions later on to, to, to you, Peter, maybe, and, and, and Scott, but if I Fine. may to, to, to Ray, um, thank you. Um, Ray, you have a very successful online wine business uh, selling only wine, yes, is, is, that, is that correct? Uh, that's correct. And spirits, uh, namely gin. Yeah. OK, thank you very much. So with your successful uh, online wine business, um, how do you feel that uh, another alcohol industry such as the sake industry, what they could learn uh, from what you have done? Um, I, th I guess part of the success of Naked, which was founded by 12 others, not I, I'm just fortunate enough to be the wine director, but um, part of the success over the years is community. And by that, I mean engagement between the winemaker or even the gin maker, distiller, and the customers. And by that, I mean when a customer buys the wine, they taste it, and a bit like a Facebook page, they can comment on the wine. And it, they, they don't need to be any expert tasting notes. It's simply, I like this, I didn't like this. And the following success is the winemaker replies to that customer, who's just an average Joe, let's say, and says, oh, thanks for your thoughts. Oh, I'm sorry you didn't like it. I'm, I'm glad you liked it. And, and this, this engagement and community, and that has really been the foundation of success. And therefore how that can translate over into sake, I guess we, we sort of all come from the same industry, which is a farming industry of a sort, uh, affected by climate, but, it comes from beautiful places and is enjoyed with typically with great food in company. So it, it has the same cultural indicators, let's say. And in today's society, I mean, if look at Naked Wines, if you say you're engaging with a, a winemaker by just sending a little message and they send a message back and then that winemaker uploads a picture of their vineyard or what they're doing, well, that's basically Instagram while the engagement was Facebook. And I'm not to say in any way that this is, our inspiration but if you simplify things the opportunity for sake is great it comes with beautiful context cultural story food background imagery and you overlay that to the greatest extent you can with an engagement with customers is i i would see that as the the area for opportunity for sake based on naked's success to date thank you thank you very much Peter, if I if I may go back to you um, as as a person who 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 um, works with both wine uh, wine and sake, how do you persuade wine distributors to stock sake? Well, the glib answer is you is to say you'll persuade them to the sake if they can sell sake. So, as with all glib statements, you need to, there's a bit of truth there, but you need to be, dig a bit deeper. Is there demand? I think you have to say that sake is still niche. Now, clearly, there are Japanese and Japanese influenced restaurants who represent a ready made market. And there's genuine enthusiasm from sommeliers and restaurateurs in that relatively niche market. However, there are niches and there are niches. The likes of Zuma, for example, are established and successful. They offer a range of sakes and they sell them. But there are other restaurants where maybe the staff are keen to tip their 
their toe in sake, so to speak, but they're likely to find it hard to achieve sell-through. Clearly for me, sake's ambition needs to extend beyond Japanese restaurants and Japanese food. It's not so hard to attract interest from sommeliers and wine buyers. We had some fun a couple of years ago partnering sake with typically English dishes like fish and chips, uh, spaghetti al ragu, kung pao chicken, uh, for an invited audience of top London sommeliers. It was really successful, but sake needs to build on that. I think there are two challenges to selling wine to the trade. Uh, in other words, gaining listings, and they are inertia. The truth is we're mostly starting from zero. So you've got to get that first listing. And then the second one is critical mass because one sign on one sake on a wine list is meaningless. We need, we need customers, restaurant customers to commit to a range. Now that's a bit chicken and egg because to get distri distributors on board, we must show them there's demand for sake, but how do we show them there's demand for sake if it's not available to purchase? The other factor that I think comes into play is sampling. We need listings by the glass or more realistically by the carafe. Or in fact, these bottles we've got here, these smaller bottles are maybe uh, another way to offer it. Now, you also need food and sake pairings on menus. Distributors need to support this activity. Producers who understand this and offer in their turn to support the distributor are more likely to have success, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. Scott, if I, if I may move on, on, on to you again. Um, you're a very successful wine importer who sells, also sells sake in, in the UK. And um, probably, as, as we've just been, most sake sold is, is akashitai, perhaps. Um, I'm, I'm told, <laughs> so, uh, perhaps. What is the key, do you think, to uh, some of this success? Do you train your distributors, for example, and retailers when you stock sake and, and sell it to, to the consumers? Yeah, it's a very good point. I mean, uh, Ree um, very kindly highlighted some stuff with her uh, very good presentation earlier. Um, you can see that the Mauritia beverages work mainly through wholesale channels. So if you think, you know, they're, I mean, I'm in the middle of doing price lists at the moment. I, I think I work with 98 wholesalers. Um, that's a walking army of 98 companies, plus their salespeople that if they're correctly educated can help spread the word. Um, we've worked tremendously hard with our, our producer, Akashi Tai, to improve the labeling. I think it's been much discussed this morning uh, we do have English on the label. Uh, the back label has um, ideal serving temperatures, which will help negate the, uh, the misconception of, of drinking sake warm. Um, uh, we, we talk a lot about food pairing and, and yes, we, we do lots of training. And as it's also been mentioned during the pandemic, we've, we've taken the opportunity to, to quench some of that thirst for, for knowledge. So lots of people have signed up and we're doing something with the United Kingdom Bartenders Guild um, only uh, next month. So yeah, lots of activities around that. And, and because we we're already a, a specialist in, in many niche categories already, um, not so much wine, and um, probably more spirits. Uh, so we you know we we sell whiskey, we sell cognac, we sell you know um, soto de chihuahua. If you know what that is, uh, we have our own single malt brand. We talk a lot about lots of different niche categories. So we are a, a go-to uh, company for, for for things, and 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 for a lot of independent companies, it gives them something different. They can come to us and. And learn about uh, sake, whereas they, they might not get that, you know, from a, from a, a more mainstream uh, distributor. Understood. Uh, Thank you very uh, much. I have uh, one one question now, if I may pray, uh, as our as our as our wine only business representative here. Would you be interested in dealing with sake in the future? Um, well, we, we actually looked into it about a year to a year and a half ago, and I engaged with Kinichi Ohashi, Master of Wine, also a sake samurai and a friend. And um, we, we tasted some of the quality, and I think this is one of the advantages of sake. By and large, the quality is very high. At the International Wine Challenge Discovery Tasting, you can go and taste through different sakes, and the consistency of quality is there. With regards how it would relate to us, we wanted to see where the overlay, where the bridge would be between wine and this, at the time, currently niche area of, you know, um, of a, cons a consuming product. And 
for the for the time being, the price point, as Rie pointed out in her presentation, we see that for our current model as a limiting factor. Also, just naked is slightly different from other wine retailers online or supermarkets is that we we tend to engage directly with the winemaker, in this case, the sake brewer, and we would fund a project right from the beginning. So our customers funded from the beginning and that just changes the whole economics. So I think there's a stepping stone for us to take. Um, we're also exploring how we expand a sort of a more premium range. And I would, I would envisage sake falling into that category when the time comes. So the answer is yes, I would consider it and uh, in due course, yeah. Thank you very much. You bring up, I mean, two points for me definitely that resonate is uh, in your in your first um, answer, you, you mentioned the, the visual, the backstory behind sake and how how beautiful all of that is and, and how that can aid, I think, the distribution of sake in the UK. But the price, of course, as, as Rie mentioned in her presentation, of course, this is probably applicable to everybody um, on, on these panels today. Maybe we can pick that up later on when when we're all together again um at, at the end if if possible i'm i'm aware that um we're on a schedule um i, I could talk to you for ages <laughs> but unfortunately i think we have to move on to the next the next uh, set of panelists um but you will be joining us for for the for the questions at, at the end um if if that's okay um thank you very much uh, scott thank you, Simon. and ray thank you very much indeed pleasure, uh, pleasure to talk to you thank you pleasure. okay well next we move uh, on to our last set of panellists um, who will look at what can be done differently. Uh, this group of panellists uh, will, will try and examine um, the new approaches uh, that could be applicable to uh, the distribution of sake in, in the UK. Our first uh, panellist is, is Chris Ashton. He is a Managing Director of Wine Logistics in the UK, joining us uh, also from Buckinghamshire. Uh, well, welcome, Chris. Thank you very much indeed. He has uh, more than 16 years involvement with the International Wine Challenge and an extensive experience in high volume wine logistics and delivery deadline solutions for the international wine and sake trade. Chris was instrumental in the development of sake within the International Wine Challenge and the subsequent global expansion of sake sales internationally. In 2020, Chris launched Wine Logistics to assist the trade with wine and sake logistics, short-term storage, temperature controlled storage for wines and sake and international shipping. And he is a cool Japan ambassador for the Japanese government. Welcome, Chris, thank you very much. Thank you. We also have Robin Sola, who is the CEO and founder of Sara Sorakami Sake, who is joining us from London. Robin was born in France and grew up with a very biased and wrong image of sake, I'm told here. Uh, it is only during his education at Waseda University in Japan that he discovered the true beauty of sake. And after five years in Japan, he traveled back to Europe in London to complete his business education at the London Business School. He became a certified kikisakishi and started the Sorakami adventure to promote premium Japanese sake in the UK. Robin is hoping to develop his sake business and the Sorakami is a sake club and e-commerce platform where anyone across the UK can try and learn about Japanese sake. Their members receive their monthly magazine and curated selection of sake to their home. And the third member of this panel is uh, Yoshitake Rie, who, of course, uh, gave us that wonderful presentation at the beginning of this session. Um, the sake lady of London, I think, maybe we can say. Thank you very much uh, for joining us again, Rie, and for, for, for everybody else. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so the new approach um, is what do we do uh, in the future? Um, Chris, maybe, maybe I, I, can, I can start with you if, if possible. Um, I, I hear you're, you're about to start a new sake distribution and online business. Um, why have you decided to, to, to do this? Well, a um, um, couple of reasons, really. Uh, I was involved and ran the IWC for many years. And, you know, for the last 11 years, I've been involved is, with sake and the sake division within that competition. And I left in the summer and set up my own company. And I wanted to try and think about how I can still work with sake and, and promote it. As in my previous employment, because we are a competition, 
in international banking, we have to be completely independent. So we can't get involved in the sales process <laughs> and all that kind of thing, because all the guys you've already spoken to do that. That you know, as a organizer of that, you are um, of the competition. You're completely independent, and you have to be separate away from that sales function. Now I am no longer employed by that company. I'm employed by myself. It means that I can now get involved with that process. So how do I use my experience of the last 11 years with Sake, but also under the current regime? Now, um, since COVID came down, one of the things with Sake in the UK, you know, the vast majority of Sake sold in the UK is at restaurants on the on trade. And you know, it is sold at retail, but, you know, it's not on the same kind of volume. So how can we work with the changing buying patterns of the UK consumer um, uh, and, and make sake more readily available and make it a little bit more cost effective? So, so I've been looking at uh, this new website I'm launching. It's called buysake.uk. There's a good plug. Um, and it will be launching very soon. I'm not sure when, but it will be launching very soon. And what we aim to do is to try and help those um, uh, companies that already import sake into the UK. Because there's going to be a perfect storm of sake because we've got last year's vintage still here that has been very difficult to sell. You've got the new vintage coming on soon or the new year's worth of sake. So there's going to be a lot of sake in the sector. So we need to try and help to get rid of it. We need to try and help sell it. And a lot of the uh, UK importers at the moment that supply the on-trade side don't have a function to sell to consumers. They have no setup to be able to do it because it's not their job. They, they don't, it's not something that they do. So, so I was trying to find a way of trying to promote and help the sake that they've got within the UK already to try and shift that to enable us to build a different sales chain. A sales movement through there, but also make it on a cost of effective base. But it, it is also looking at sake that currently doesn't have an importer or distributor because it's quite hard to find one to take it take on the work on the new business. So if I could do small introductions of sake, so take you know six cases of a sake, put it online at Buy Sake UK, and hopefully sell it to UK consumers and build a market to them then they're in a much better position for an importer or a distributor to take them on. So if they've already got a, a small market, but it's selling well, I could then say, okay, you've outgrown us as a search for this product. And then we can move them on to somebody that can um, help develop their, their, their sake into the UK sector, into the on-trade sector. I don't deal with the on-trade sector. It's something I'm not involved with. I've never had been. Um, so, so, it's really just a tool to put sake in the hands of people to be able to buy it online um, and also try and keep the cost down. Because if we small, if we bring in small amounts over, it, it's not too bad. We can do it. Um, as long as I can consolidate them in Japan, which I can, and then we can bring them over right, by boat or by, by plane, um, we can do it. Part of the issue and the reason why I haven't launched already was I was going to do this, but because of the looming Brexit that happened at the end of last year. It was ridiculous to try and try and start this before then because we didn't know realistically how we would get the sake in, whether there would be any problems at borders and things like that. But also because of COVID, now container prices and shipping prices are through the roof, are just crazy. So if I can give you some indication, a, a, a container from Tokyo um, was about three and a half to five thousand pounds, something like that. It's now fifteen thousand pounds. It's just crazy. There is a global shortage of of, um, of containers, but that's that's not because of Brexit. In a way, it is, but it's not. But it's really the COVID situation because of the containers are all not in the, they're all in the wrong place, um, and China has. Um, has stopped buying as many things internationally, but it's also stopped shipping. So the containers are all in the destinations and not in China. So it's really difficult for the global market to get these things back because the, the shipping container, the shippers, don't want to fill ships with empty containers and take them back to China or wherever it may be. 
So the, the whole process, now it's, it's ironing itself out, but it's going to take a bit of time to do. Um, um, we were hoping to do this over Chinese New Year, but it was it would, just didn't happen because China staggered the way they did their holidays and things like that. So even now, the, the container prices are just sky high. So, so that is going to add an added pressure onto large volumes of, of sake coming in for our current distributors and things like that. Um, um, and you could imagine, because there's no planes in the sky, air freight is just unbelievable. Unbelievable costing on air freight at the moment and shipping and things like that. Added to that, the new Brexit regulations about um, paperwork and everything else that's needed to come into the UK, it's caused a, a, a few problems in the first few months of this year. So we have to focus on what's here at the moment and, and look at the long-term view of importing things in. So that's the reason why I was, I'm looking at, at uh, uh, importing or starting this new website to try and help the people of Sake that's here, but also then do small managing, uh, manage small packages of new Sake into the market. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I can see that. Um, yes, the, the situation that we're facing at the moment is a, is a is a real impetus actually in for change, and and that's that's really interesting and and, and really quite heartening in a way uh, to, to to understand. Robin, if I if I may go on on uh, on to on to you, thank you. Um, I was I was I was intrigued in your biography about uh, your time at Waseda University, for example. Um, so you have experience of Japan. Um, you're also the first sake club in the UK, I, I, I believe. This, this is a, quite an interesting in business plan. How, how, do you, how do you convert the novice, that, that's me, by the way, uh, uh, into a sake lover? Um, is there any secret? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. The, the good thing is that I used to be a sake lover and actually um, I used to be a sake uh, disapprover, if I can say, growing up in France and I think most Europeans and people in the UK can relate. Uh, we have this very wrong image of sake. Uh, I remember my dad ordering sake at a bar and he was served like this very strong spirit. So growing up, like we knew what the word sake was, but we never really actually had great sake. And so moving to Japan and living there, I had the pleasure to discover sake through friends who obviously knew uh, about the drink. And so I went through this whole process of discovering the drink and educating myself. And overcoming the bias that I had uh, pretty much over my entire my entire life. And so um, the company was created with a goal to sort of recreate my experience, if I can say, in Japan, uh, where uh, we try to take all the difficult parts and blocks in the customer purchasing uh, funnel, and we're trying to make it as easy as possible and as wholesome as possible. So um, the idea of the club is that, well, we pick the sake for you. You don't have to try to figure it out yourself. You learn as you go. And so we start well, obviously with great sake. And from there, uh, they usually hooked from the very first bottle that we try to, to, we try to get a very good one. Actually, uh, Oka has been a, a very, uh, quite a big success actually for, for, for that front. Um, and then from there, we, we will provide them with value. We, we, we send them a magazine and tasting notes and we'll see adding a lot of perks around um, because sake is not just about the drink itself for us. It's, it's mostly about the, the whole culture and people behind it as well. And you cannot separate the two. Uh, they go hand in hand, especially at the beginning, if you're trying to understand why things are done a certain way, it's important to immerse yourself, especially nowadays, you can't travel. So we're trying to bring a little piece of Japan uh, to our customers. And with that, we're also trying to, to enlarge the offering around the bottle as much as we can to, to really create a mostly of an experience rather than a, a specific um, sake geeky company, if I can, if that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. So I understand from from what you're saying that you you very much put a um, um, an emphasis on the experiential part of 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 sake consumption through this this idea of a cultural experience together, uh, which is really interesting. Um, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I'm I'm aware we're 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 slightly running out of time, but I, I do have a couple of a couple of other questions, if I may. Um, Yoshitake san, I know that you've spoken briefly to us, but um, already. Um, I don't know if you have any ideas quickly about how you could raise the profile of, of sake through PR. 
but but also I, I wanted to understand is there anything other than sake that you thought might might mm -hmm. be uh, <laughs> Simon uh, don't worry I think shochu will be really upcoming soon it's um, uh, the, the question is, but the shochu is a wonderful drink and it's a very national unique drink, uh, but they need to have a recognition and identity in this country, which sake has the same thing. So we need to work at both. But also, as you know, we don't need to explain, but it's whiskey, Japanese whiskey did a fantastic job of winning the competition. But the Japanese whiskey was in a way not easy is the word, but because whiskey is made everywhere, I mean, Scotland. Then Japan won that world sort of, you know, uh, priority, I mean, the, uh, in the category. So that was outstanding. But the Japan sake and the shochu are unique to Japan. So it is a different story. Um, you and uh, earlier, first question about raising a profile. I've been thinking every night sleeplessly what to do. But you know, I found obviously Sake's misconception needed to be removed, dis dismystified. But there's a chance arriving, especially lately. Um, for example, Simon, do you remember um, in the wine world, porphenol is kind of a, you know, in, in, in uh, wine was told it is good for your sort of, you know, body circulation, blood circulation. And the people started jumping on wine, in, even in Japan. It started selling that kind of mindset of giving, um, what you call it? It's nothing, it's health, but also something, you know, friendly and good for, it's not bad for you. It's alcohol. I cannot say it is good for you, but something you can enjoy. <laughs> And also, it's not harming, rather doing something good. And I have to say, sake has something very special about it, which we will be continuously uh, finding the way to explain to the public. But using a koji, this microorganism, is something, it's more environmental. People in the sake industry are very much uh, how do you call it, eco-friendly business. And uh, f um, sake itself is really, I, can't, I have to be very care careful. I don't say healthy, but it's very sensitive about this environmental thing. So from that kind of point, not only just a drink, but it's um, in terms of the echo, sake might kind of res being respected because this year, uh, Fukuju from the Kobe won the award as a uh, you know, uh, business drink uh, award for the Echo's drink on top, uh, out of all that uh, alcohol. Things like that might actually bring some another, uh, you know, raise the profile and uh, which I'm kind of looking for uh, as Sake deserves it. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. I, I'm, I'm aware of time, but very briefly, maybe from Robin and from Chris, if I could just ask you one question, and, uh, and maybe if you could give us a, a, a brief answer. What, what do you think are the, the major obstacles for the UK audience um, that, to, to, to be familiar with, with sake in the future? If you could maybe just be rather brief before we move on to the, the, the question and answer session. Maybe Robin first, is if, if if that's um, from our perspective, we see probably the lack, uh, but also which means the big opportunity for uh, advancement in all digital um, education and media and content being created about Sake. Uh, if you type Sake, for example, on Google, on YouTube, you won't find a lot. And this is one example of what's probably missing about uh, the education that comes with the market. Thank you. Maybe Chris. Um, I think one of the big things for the UK, especially the UK alcohol industry is price driven. So we need to work hard on, on the price, the retail price that we're selling here. That means we need to look at everything from point to point, all the logistics, all the way through. You can't do anything about tax, but you can do things about getting things from A to B. And I think there's too many 
there's too many people taking a cut before you can sell it. So we need to, um, we need to look at that very, very hard. Thank you very much. It's really good points. Thank you so much. Um, the price comes up again, doesn't it? Time and time again. So maybe we can we can maybe look at that a little bit. If if I can ask maybe everybody to 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 join us again. Um, we have some questions coming in from our audience. Um, if I could welcome back our our restaurant group, our our wine group, um, and also our brewers from from Japan. Again, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, we have a question here, um, which I'm going to try and, and, and divide up. Um, first of all, I'd like to ask um, Mr. 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 Kamoda and, and Mr. Maegaki in, in Japan, is there a difference between the UK and other European countries, like France, Germany, and Italy, um, demand with regard to demands for, for for sake? Maybe Mr. Kamota first, if I could, if I could ask that to you. Hi, eto, ma watashi no keiken desu kere domo, Latin ke no kuni no hou ga. Well, in my experience, at least, it's proved harder to export to the Latin countries, to Spain, Italy, and France, at least for our company. Okay, thank you. That seems like quite a good point then for sake in the UK. Uh, Mr. Maigaki, um, do, do, do you have any a, a experience of, of, of this? Hi. Eh,味わいにその国によって特徴があるかっていうと、僕はそういうのはないと思います。まずは蔵元がどういう酒を売りたいかっていうことをしっかりアピールすることが重要だと思ってます。で、えっと、国によって売れ方が違うかというと、それはやっぱりあの、今かもとさんが言われたように、それぞれの国ってあると思います。一つヨーロッパで、え、販売日本酒が販売するのが、え、例えばアメリカや中国に比べて、まだ
Um, I think uh, there isn't the dom dominant player, uh, let it um, be it uh, a brand or a distributor. Um, I think it's highly fragmented. And um, I don't think it's a number of, or lack of number of uh, brands uh, here in the UK. Um, I think we have enough brands. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I would, I would agree very much with that. Um, of course, there are some big producers that are well represented over here, but it kind of depends on your definition of a big producer. Um, of course, there are huge producers that are over here, but there are um, medium to upper level um, uh, size breweries that are also well, well represented and medium sized breweries over here. But the, the fact of the matter is small breweries aren't really sustainable in Japan, let alone internationally. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my idea, you know, Kashi Tai is, is by no means a big distillery. You know, um, I think they've got five fermenters that would fit in a large one in, in, in one of the big um, curas. So uh, we're, we're by no means a, a, a big facility that we, that we work with. Understood. Thank you very much. Um, we have a question here. Um, well, a, a comment and, 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 and a question. Um, this is uh, from, uh, I don't know who this is from, I'm afraid. Um, I think that Ollie is right about labelling, um, but it's really vital that the bottle doesn't appear to be made for the UK market. Um, consumers need to remain convinced that the product is authentic. Is this something that brewers understand? Or maybe is this something that Japan understands? <laughs> who would like to maybe answer that question? Maybe I will direct it to well, right, Oliver first, please. I mean, I, I, I went on to um, say I think it is important and my market research um, had indicates that it is very important to have those kanji things on there and to have a sense of Japan. And I completely agree that, you know, white labeling goods for a specific market when you're talking about sake is not a great idea. Um, but, uh, you know, if you look at some of the labels that, I mean, I would suggest that what Scott was saying about Akashi Tai, they've done a fantastic job of, of relabeling um, their stuff. And it's, you know, on point for the, uh, um, the UK, for the international consumer without losing its authenticity as a, um, as a Japanese product. Okay, please, Yoshitaki-san. When it comes to the difficulty in the communication, I think we have a two layers. One is language, as you say, like a kanji, we, people cannot read it. But even though, for example, Junmai Daiginjo, we put it in writing in Roman character, people still do not understand what it means. So we have to understand the two ways of communication. In my opinion, those Tokutai Mei Shoshu and Ginjo Daiginjo, these are made from the point of sake brewers uh, as a process. It is not meant to be <laughs> for the communication for the seller. This is even for in Japan, we have a same problem. I really think we may need a dynamic change here to even put, you know, Jumai Dai Ginjo can be called something else or even distributor can put into the Oliver does often these kind of things, but it's more communicable word explain what is inside of the uh, bottle. Thank you very much. Can I jump in there? Um, I, I, I was thinking earlier when, when Ollie mentioned this and I, I'd agree with, with Ria. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna bring this back to wine as well. The late great Gerard Basset, who was a master sommelier, master of wine and a master of wine business for his dissertation, researched the way consumers looked at restaurant wine lists. And he found that they preferred and they wanted information based on style, yeah. uh, both for guidance and navigation and also for making a selection. So I think what Oliver's been doing with his very short, snappy descriptions for is a really good idea. And I think I, I get Christine's point about authenticity and not wanting to not not wanting to look like something that's just for an export market but i think the truth is 
many sake labels are impenetrable. Maybe that's our fault because we're not good linguists. But you, you, you know, why would someone buy something if they can't if they can't understand it? So I think the idea of of um, for, yes, okay, Junmai Daiginjo, and as Ria said, that suits the brewers. But actually, you've got to think think about the consumers and what's going to help them um, make a choice to buy a bottle of sake. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I, I suppose it's, it's 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 it is a question maybe to Japan as well. Um, Kamoto-san and Maegaki-san, do do you do you do you think about this? Yes, please, Maegaki-san. あの、今まこびさんがすごくあの素晴らしいご指摘をいただいたと思います。あの、確かにその今の現状、純米大吟醸っていう があると思います。え、実際日本で売られてるワインに、え、フランスや、イタリアで売られてるワインに、おもじらべるに日本語が書いてあるものがあったら、それはちょっと きちっと理解してる人はあの購入ができると思うんですね。日本酒もそういう意味で言うと、え、わかる内容をもっときちっと示す必要があるんじゃないかと思います。and maybe not the easier, the best way of explaining to somebody what is inside the bottle. Uh, and I think there, there must be a, a better way that we can explain to consumers um, in a way that they can understand. I think if, if bottles of wine sold in Japan from, from France or Italy replaced all of the, all of the words on the bottle with, with Japanese, no one's going to pick up that bottle of wine. But if the explanation on that bottle was somehow translated, that you can't avoid the fact that that, that is more understandable uh, for a Japanese consumer. Uh, and so I, I agree that, that there probably is a better way that we, that we can explain uh, the content of the bottle to the consumer. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, I, I'll move on to uh, another question here. We have a question from Paul Farrelly. Um, thank you so much for an excellent webinar, um, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, with the growing popularity of washoku, that's that's Japanese Japanese food, uh, Japanese restaurants here, that's London, I presume, seemed uh, to have weathered the recession well after uh, the 2008 financial crash. Uh, two of my favourites in London, however, have succumbed to the COVID-19 uh, situation. One closed, one moved from the centre. What is the panelists' experience? What are the panelists' experiences regarding the effects more broadly? And what help do people think is needed to ensure continued success? Anybody who would, uh, maybe that's for our restaurant group uh, distributors. Uh, I yeah. think that's very difficult to answer. Um, I, I think we're still in midst of the pandemic, in midst of the crisis. So um, um, it's uh, still uh, very preliminary to uh, answer that question yet. Okay. But any help that uh, we can get, any help that we can give the hospitality sector, um, we're always uh, open to ideas and we're always um, thinking of ways how we can help. Thank you. Scott, were you maybe maybe going to say something then? No, I I, I thought that Asami would be able to answer this because she's been. Yeah. Very I, <laughs> no, I agree with Mogi-san. It's very difficult to see uh, what's going to happen to the restaurants now. Uh, we are thinking that maybe thirty percent of restaurant will be closed, but then new restaurant will be opened. 
um, 2008 situation, it was not an easy one, but actually it didn't affect as much as we thought it would be. Uh, so the restaurant did close, but those restaurants were actually not doing that well to begin with. <laughs> then newer restaurants uh, had a more chance to open because of those um, not so well restaurants were closed. So they could go into the new new ideas of a restaurant coming up. So I'm very optimistic that a restaurant will continue uh, to be good in, but it would not be the same way as before. It would be a different way. I would echo some of that. I mean, um, I think I mentioned um, when I was last uh, speaking that we had a, a boom for Eat Out to help out. There's, there's rumors of, of that happening again. Um, many people in the um, in the alcohol trade are predicting a, a return to a roaring 20s scenario where everybody goes crazy to go out. Um, and, 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 you know, and I mentioned inertia as well. If there are restaurants that are doing well and, and groups that are already succeeding, I, I can only see them, if they've managed to, to hold on this tight so far, that they will be moving heaven and earth to make sure that um, their, their offering is, is strong um, and that they'll be successful. Okay. Thank you. We have a few more minutes. Maybe I've got maybe a couple more questions. Um, um, if I can make sense of that one. This is another one to do with maybe the, the, the wine industry as well. Um, how animals and insects have been used or successfully as persuasive visual identifiers on wine labels. Um, do you think that this could work for sake labels too, not eliminating the canon notations completely? Uh, I, I, I don't, maybe, maybe, please, Scott, <laughs> if you wish, yes. We have a fish. I, you do indeed. We, we have a sea bream already. <laughs> it's, it's, it's in your name, isn't it? The name says uh, says exactly what it what, what it is. And I, I'm just thinking, Ray, maybe. I mean, Ray, you're very obviously very familiar with wine. Um, do, do you think this is somewhere that that, that sake could go? Um, yeah, I think the reference might be pointing back to what were referred to as critter brands. So where wines like Yellowtail and the like from Australia, and they were successful in kangaroos and so on. Um, I, well, personally speaking, or from a naked wines perspective, I wouldn't encourage that as your leading, um, you know, call to action. I think it's more, as, as, as has been discussed, maintaining the uh, culture and heritage of kanji whilst making something recognisable and uh, understandable. And then it it is just about cultural relevance on the label. And Japan has that in spades. So... In my opinion, I'm not sure the critters are required for the success of sake. Thank you very much. And, and maybe I, I, I am very aware of time, but maybe one, one question maybe for, for any, any, anybody um, who'd like to chip in. Um, this is a, the price has been the big, the, the big thing that seems to be coming up uh, through the questions as well. I know uh, Chris mentioned uh, that uh, we may be should be careful to, to, to take out some of the, the, the middlemen. Does, does anybody have any suggestions or, or concerns maybe for the future of, of, of this? Thank you, Oliver, yes. Um, I've come to the realization that there's very, 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 very little that can be done on price. Um, when you look at the average UK consumer spends about six pounds 50 on a bottle of wine, in order to compete with that in the sake world is nigh on impossible. Um, and logistics is a little bit expensive, but it's not crazy expensive. Tax is the same as wine. Um, uh, storage, of course, in the UK is a little bit more expensive, but we're talking about pence a bottle. We're not talking about pounds and pounds and pounds a bottle. The reality is the kind of wine that you're buying for £6.50 in the UK is produced at very um, reasonable price at origin. That doesn't happen for sake unless you're talking about um, very cheap Fatsushu ordinary designation sake, which may not necessarily have the quality that we're looking for in order to expand the category as we've been discussing. So I 
yeah, I've come to the conclusion after nine years that there is very little you can do on the bottom end of sake to improve the price. And thus we should, instead of being trying to reduce the price, find the appropriate market to hit at the price point that we all inhabit. Um, I, I agree with Oliver uh, totally that uh, there's little that we can do. I mean, it's exercise, exercise tax. But uh, one thing we can do at a restaurant setting is smaller pours, make the pour smaller. If the glass of wine is, if the pour is 175 millimeters, uh, milliliters, then uh, for sake, make it, you know, 100 or even 90, you know, so that uh, a glass of wine and a glass of sake matches um, per pour. Uh, making um, uh, smaller pours, uh, instead of having 300 ml uh, bottles on the menu, uh, that's just the worst way to sell sake at a restaurant setting. Um, so there are a lot of things that uh, we can uh, still do uh, in order to sort of uh, show sake at a more familiar pricing um, setting. Thank you. Yes, Yoshitake-san. Uh, you know, I have completely agreed. Sake is expensive and that there might be very little room to reduce, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we cannot sell it at the retail shops or neither, I mean, the wine stores. So we still completely different, uh, you know, problem is we need to explore both sides as well as a restaurant. Yes, yes, Tasaka-san, thank you. So yeah, the sake price, I don't think it could be lowered, even though we try really hard, we probably lower down one or two pounds, it's not going to be uh, six pounds a bottle. And, but once the sake is opened, you can keep it little longer mm -hmm. than compared to wine. So for the retail shops, you know, and also the alcohol is higher compared to wine, one or 2%, maybe uh, 4%, but still the consumption of the sake doesn't have to be whole bottle if the alcohol strength is a little bit higher. So I think uh, yeah, to looking at the uh, lowering the price, yes, it would be difficult, uh, but maybe look at the different way to enjoy sake by uh, considering it would be longer period of the consumption after opened. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. If we uh, don't have any more comments there, I think maybe it's, uh, it's, it's time to, to, to finish, I'm afraid. Um, Thank you so much to everybody. I can see that this is a conversation that needs to be um, looked at even more. Um, I'd like to, 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 to say thank you to, especially to Kamota-san and Maegaki-san from, from, from Japan. Thank you. I, I have my, um, I have my, I have my sake and I will, I, I will, everybody, there we go. Um, I will enjoy these later at some point. Thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Chris, thank you to Robin, uh, to Yoshitake-san, to, 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 to Oliver, to Mongi-san, to Ray, to Tasaka-san, and to Scott and, and to Peter, thank you so much uh, for, for joining us. Um, I, I sincerely hope that everybody who's been watching has, has, has had a, an interesting time. Um, I found it most interesting myself and I, I would maybe, maybe I could be so bold as to suggest maybe Japan House gets on board with maybe, maybe we can uh, have a sake label design competition or, or, or ah, something of the like in order good. to try and engage uh, people in, in that way. Maybe, maybe we can do that. Um, a video of this event is now archived on the Japan House London YouTube channel, so you will be able to access a, a recording of this uh, for the future. Um, all participants who've attended today's event uh, will be sent a, a questionnaire and the opportunity to offer feedback. Okay. Today's event. So please uh, do do that if you can. That would be most appreciated. Also, a big thank you to our interpreters, uh, to uh, to Bethan and to Air. Thank you so much for all your hard work over this long session. Um, why sell sake in the UK? I hope you've discovered some trade secrets uh, from our market experts. Um, we uh, will leave you now. Thank you so much for staying up in Japan as well, uh, well into the late evening. I hope everybody stays safe. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all again. Thank you very much. Thank
Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye, Simon. Bye bye. 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 bye.